Look how quiet it is. I'm heading back out. It's quite bright, but there's almost no wind. The tide is about 25, 30 minutes off high water. We're currently making one knot and that's it. So it's going to take me quite a while to get out of here, I think. Here, some geese or other off to my starboard side. We're doing about 1.3 knots. Just picked up a little bit when the wind, when the sail sweep to the other side. No centreboard or very little centreboard. Just trying to get out of the river before it all dies completely. But no, my luck, it'll pick up. So the mist behind me's cleared up a little bit. There's a little tiny bit of wind. We're doing just under two knots, drifting down, back down the river. Um, it's quite warm. There's no wind. So I think it was a smart move because we weren't going to get anywhere near um, the charted high water. We weren't even going to make it to Dandy Hole, which has got water in it at all states of the tide. It's a nice little anchoring area, apparently, overnight and, and such, but I wasn't going to make it. So I'm heading back. With this chart app, I can find out what state of tide I am at. So looking at this blue icon here, we can see over on the left, it's telling me that the state of tide is 4.38 metres, current time. And then it's telling me the high water at Jupiter Point is half past one, which is about 10 minutes later than... Devonport which is in the Tamar and also shows me what's going to happen later on. It's actually getting quite hot here. <laughs> There's hardly a breath of wind but because I'm going with it I can't feel any wind. We're making a bottom speed of about 1.4 knots which is nothing. Moan moan whinge whinge. At least I'm not behind a desk. The mist behind me up the liner is still there and it must be thicker either lower down in the Tamar or in Plymouth Sound because I can hear the foghorns going. Up here it's not as misty obviously uh, but there's still hardly any wind at all. I'm only drifting at about 1.6 knots at the moment. The latest weather from Rame Head, which was about five minutes ago, is showing at about 4.3 knots. And if we look at the graph, it's dropping to almost nothing. And the high is also dropping to nothing. It's very quiet. Getting the occasional noisemaker going up the river as I'm trying to make my way down. Still drifting. One and a half knots, Jupiter Point coming up on my starboard side. I believe Jupiter Point must be doing sea cadets or something of that ilk. Drifting, drifting, drifting. 1.6 
Nuts. Healthy Commando, this is Long Room, that is all copied. Are you ready for a sound slip, Rep? Over. Yeah, Long Room, uh, yes, please. Uh, Salty Commander, this is Long Room, sound sit rep. Information, boys and anchorages, uh, all boys and anchorages are clear. Traffic, there are no major moves to affect your departure today from uh, Victoria Wharf. However, there is a high amount of leisure craft out in the sound, so exercise caution um, as you exit. Weather, uh, wind at the breakwater is currently southwesterly at four and a half knots. So, uh, correction, southeasterly at Four and a half knots. Uh, current height of tide is 4.45 metres, and visibility is good out to approximately two nautical miles. Uh, traffic clearance: ships. Uh, Salty Commander has traffic clearance to depart, depart Victoria Wharf and proceed to sea via the western entrance at uh, 1328. Uh, report when underway. Over. Long room, Salty Commander. Understood, mate. Thanks. Well, as we just heard, that was a, a sit rep from Long Room about the breakwater at four and a half knots. That's nothing. I may have to start my engine after all. Yeah, this is getting a bit uh, old now. Uh, if I'd have known it was going to be this calm at this point of the day, I may not have bothered coming out. I'd rather aim for higher wind get me round doing something rather than just drifting along as I am now at about one knot I'm hoping there's a little bit more wind round about these barges so at the moment I'm drifting about 1.3 knots which may all be tied um, the tide is now starting to go out As I hoped for, there's a bit more wind further out into the Tamar. Now I'm probably going to have to go behind this particular barge and then go right across the river and tack home. Just gone behind a barge, now into the Tamar proper and bottom speed's now up to 3.2. Looks like we're going to have to tack all the way home. Could get quite dull. The position, direction and length of each length on the tack is determined not only by the depth but also from where the wind is coming from. So on the previous tack in this direction I didn't even make it to mid-channel and that was because the wind just disappeared there. So to get back into the wind I had to go back towards the Devon side. At the moment we seem to be holding a bit more wind so we should hopefully be able to cross to the Cornish side a bit more and increase the length of this tack. Port tack making about three knots three and three three and a half something like that um, gonna have to put a tack in fairly soon just because I haven't worked out how to permeate rocks yet that looks like we've got a fast rib coming in from the port side so yeah better do the tack currently making a bottom speed of about just over four and uh, 4.3 knots, which is pretty good. It's clouded over a little bit. Tacking as close as I dare to either side of the river. The uh, They're both military up here. There's a bit of float and fuzz about. So we don't want to upset them. And again, the heading length of my uh, tack runs is changing. So technically, I think you're not allowed within 
100 meters of the key side on the certainly on the Devon side and it might be 50 meters but I'm not going to risk it this next bit might take a bit of planning because I've got to try and tack across the river and avoiding the ferries so we've just got one leaving the Devon side we've got one just coming into the Devon side there's one on the Cornish side still loading I believe so we will get as close as I can to the Devon side of the river hopefully that ferry's going to accelerate and I shall be able to tack behind it obviously I have to pay attention to the fact that there's some chains coming out of the back of it so although at the moment I would be well clear I've got to pay uh, like I said pay attention to the fact that there's chains hanging out the back now they should go down quite quickly managed to get through the ferries okay and went inside the moorings at uh, Tor Point and now we're just trying to get around the uh, Devonport dockyard but the wind is acting against the tide at the moment and making it difficult so I'm gonna to have to put another tack in and head over towards the muddy bit and then we'll be able to make it around the corner it's definitely got a bit murky Cornwall's covered in mist uh, there's a bit of wind we're doing about 3.8 knots at the moment probably be a bit more once I get um, down into the lower part of the Tamar currently heading over an area on the chart called West Mud and if you go a bit further it's called St John's Lake I've had to turn a little bit more to starboard than I would have liked just because of the way the wind's going and I shall keep going in this direction until it runs out of depth or it gets very shallow the echo sounder at the moment is telling me 23 and a half and looking at the chart it comes up very very quickly just entering into another dead spot probably should have been further over the river over there but that's the wrong side of the channel so just have to see what we can do now further down I can see a couple of picos I believe they are so they're actually sailing so there's some wind down there so I've put myself in a bit of a dead spot here which is a bit silly we're making about 1.6 knots over the ground and I think most of that if not all of that is due to the current so what I should have done with the wind direction that we're actually got at the moment is I should have been further over to the um, port side on the left bank of the River Tamar so up ahead there are some looks like there's a sailing club going on and they've got plenty of wind down there so hopefully in a few more minutes we'll get some wind can't even see into the sound properly can't see Drake's Island even um, so there's definitely quite a bit of mist in there we shall have to see what the viz is like when we get down there to see what we do whether we continue on into the sound, go round the breakwater, etc. Because it's only three o'clock. As I thought, there is uh, a bit more wind down here. And the visibility is getting less. So it's now almost that uh, Devil's Point is just about to disappear through the mist. So I'm coming up to Devil's Point and it's starting to disappear even as I'm getting closer 
So we're managing four knots at the moment. And what we'll do is we'll put a tack in. Uh, we don't want to get too close to these fishing people, so put a tack in now. Currently sat in Barn Pool. And as you can see from the chart, I'm not too far from the shore, but I can barely see it. So I'm going to have to use the engine on the way back and uh, hope for the best. So as you can hear, I've started my engine because there is literally no wind here and it wouldn't be safe to try and continue without it. I've now started motoring and uh, so we want to be at about 80 degrees to start with. We'll follow compass heading and the chart. At the moment I can just about see the next mark along the channel so I'm going to use uh, the channel markers and my paper chart. I think I can just uh, channel mark hop and uh, get home safely. I can now see marks further away so it should be easier to see stuff moving and getting close towards me. So I'm finally back on the mooring. I used the engine to get here and I've just run it dry, which took longer than I expected actually. Looking at the weather in the catwater, it's not so bad. But then when you take a look out into the sound and across the Tamar, that's quite misty. <laughs> 